let's talk about chord secants and tangents and how they relate to one another. So let's say we're given this circle and it's got two intersecting chords. Well, we can actually set up a ratio within those chords in order to solve for any missing piece we happen to have. Now, one thing that's really nice is the circle sets up our ratio for us. So we'll have A over 15 equals 13 over nine. From here, we wanna cross multiply. So nine A will equal because we'll have nine times A. We'll have thirteen times fifteen. Which is one hundred and ninety-five. So let's divide each side by nine. And A will equal uh, twenty-one point six repeating. And there's our answer. Let's do another. Okay, so again, our formula, our ratios are gonna be set up for us. 23 over 21 equals nine over A. Again, we'll cross multiply. So 23A is going to be equal to nine times 21, which is 189. Divide by 23 on both sides. And we'll get A, which in this case is 8.21739, all that stuff. I guess this says round to the nearest hundredth. So there's the hundredths place. Will the seven make it round up or stay the same? It'll make it round up to 8.22. Okay, so that's with chords. Chords, you get to set up nice ratios. But what happens if we're dealing with a secant and a tangent, one that continues through the shape and one that just hits at the point of tangency? Well, that formula is slightly different. Um, what you're going to have to do is you're going to square the tangent piece, and that's going to be equal to the outside part of the secant multiplied by the sum or total for the secant. So for this case, our tangent is 14. We're going to square that. The outside part of our secant is 13. And then the sum is 13 plus C. And now we can solve for C. 14 squared is 196. We should probably remember we need to distribute. Um, so that's going to give me 13 times 13 is 169 plus 13C. Okay, let's minus 169 from each side. That'll cancel and that'll give me Twenty-seven equals thirteen C. Divide by thirteen. Divide by thirteen. And we want to round that to the nearest hundredth. Um, so my two point oh seven six will round to two point oh. Or this formula is that important formula. Your tangent squared is going to be equal to the outer part of your secant times the sum of your secant. Okay, let's do that again. Hey, we've got that same formula we're going to fill in. The outer part of our secant is B. Sorry, our, our tangent is B. So we get B squared equals the outer part of our secant is 6. The sum of our secant is 6 plus 8. Oh, this is nice. Um, so we'll have 6 plus 8 is 14 times 6 is 84. So we have b squared equals 84. How are we going to undo that square? Well, we will take the square root. And b will be equal to 
point one six five such and such and such and such. We want to round to the nearest hundredth. So that'll be approximately nine point one seven because the five will make the six round up. All right, our last kind of problem involves two secants. Now you remember on the last problem, it said the outside part of the secant. Got multiplied by the sum of the secants. Well, we're going to keep doing that. We'll just have two secants. So we'll have another outside part of the secant multiplied by the sum of the secants. So let's uh, handle this one first. Um, outside part of the secant is 5, and then we'll have 28 plus 5. And then we'll do this next one. Outside part of the secant is 6. And then we'll have b plus 6. Now, in order to finish this problem, we're going to have to do some distribution. Well, I guess I could use order of operations and add this together first. So I'd get uh, 33 times 5 is going to be equal to 6 times b is 6b plus 36. Uh, 5 times 33 is 165 equals 6b plus 36 minus 36 from each side. That's going to give me 129 equals 6b. So we'll be able to divide by 6. And that'll give me b is equal to 21.5. So very similar to the last formula you had to learn. It's just now we don't have to worry about squaring a tangent. We just have two secants that we split up. All right, last problem. Remember, it's going to be the outsides. So 14, I'm going to do this part first, uh, times the sum of the secant, which is 7a minus 3 plus 14 equals sum the other secant, uh, 14 times 14 plus 15. Let's do a little bit of combining like terms here. So we'll have 14 times 7a, negative 3 plus 14 is 11 equals 14 times 14 plus 15 is 29. Okay, now let's do our multiplication. Um, on this one we'll have to distribute and then there's only two numbers over on the other side. So 14 times 29 will give us that 406. Uh, over here, 14 times seven will give us 98A plus 14 times 11, which will give us 154. Okay, now it's minus 154 from each side. We'll have 98a equals 252 divided by 98, divided by 98. And A is going to be equal to 2.5714. 
um, this says round to the nearest hundredth. So that's approximately equal to 2.57 because the one will not uh, make the um, A value round up. Okay, so I'm going to be able to put 2.57 here. And then it wants me to find the length from A to C, which means I need to plug in that A value. Be careful, you're plugging in the A value that's exact. So I'm going to plug in the A value that's exact right into here. I'm going to store, I've got it stored in my calculator, so you're not going to see that step. It's just going to be times seven minus three. And that ends up actually being exactly 15. Now, we wouldn't have got that exact number if we had rounded at some point. Like, let's say if I had tried to plug in 7 times 2.57 minus 3 into my calculator. Then I would end up with 14.99, which is very close to 15, but it's not exact. So make sure you're plugging in exact values. Okay, so now I know this whole thing is 15 plus 14, which is 29. I guess this was some kind of isosceles thing. All right, very good. Good luck on Get More Math.